afternoon, Melbourne. It is Lucy and Kel relate through the month of October, Mental Health Month. This is the third of five one-off, one-hour specials in regards to dealing with mental health. Yep, we need to have these conversations. The statistics are pretty big, guys. Almost half of all Australians will experience some sort of mental illness in their lifetime. And right now, look around you, one in six Australians is experiencing depression or anxiety or both. Right now, one in six, that is a loved one in your life. So this is why we're having these conversations, to remove the stigma, to remind us that we're not alone, that we are all in this together and we can learn and we can have a lot of grace to those in our lives and grace towards ourselves when the going gets tough. We've been talking to great experts. Today we have a corker of an expert as well. I'll get to that in just a moment. But you have about two minutes to go grab yourself a cup of tea or a cuppa and you can join us also on the text on 04288 or you can call in in the next uh, hour really in 1300 777 because it's all about to kick off after this. 89.9, the light positive radio. Lucy and Kel relate on a Friday afternoon in Melbourne, episode three, yeah. show number three, as we tackle Mental Health Month here on the light. Some of the best and the brightest and the biggest names in all things mental health joining us. And today, one of the greats, a household name here in Australia, a well-known Aussie author, activist, psychotherapist who lectures worldwide, you probably have a copy of one of his books on your bookcase, Raising Boys, Raising Girls, The Secret of Happy Children. Steve Biddulph joins us this afternoon. Good afternoon, Steve. Hello to both of you and to everyone listening. Hi. Oh, <laughs> what a treat to have you with us today. I've been reading your latest book, Fully Human, and I've been listening to podcasts of you all week. I've learned all about your life and I feel like you're one of my closest oh, friends thing. now. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. But you've got this brand new book out, which is what we're going to talk about today, Fully Human, where therapy meets neuroscience. It's such a great book. It's written in the most easy to understand language. And it's really about something called super sense. So let's get straight into it, Steve. This book, what it's about and how does it all work? Okay. Yes. Well, people that are listening will know that I've for about 35, 40 years now, I've been writing about parenting. Mm. and uh, But I began to get worried about the mental health of the grown-ups, of mm. us adults, because children depend on mum and dad being, you know, afloat and reasonably cheerful and happy, and everyone was getting very knocked around by mm. modern life. Mm. And so, so for two years, I sat down and I tried to work out going all the way back through, because I, as well as writing books, I also was treating people with trauma and with tough childhoods mm. um, and what was the could I get it down to really clear understandings that could help someone um, and because um, we we need to get a handle on the mind you know our mind kind of runs away on us and causes a lot of trouble um, and, and and I discovered some really great things that, that help you know sort of kind of first aid and self-help it doesn't mean we still don't need psychologists mm. but um, if you know your own mind and if you can teach that to your children as well, it's probably the greatest skill for life to have, to be comfortable in your own yes. skin and know, know your way around, yes. I will say in my own experience, sometimes you feel like your mind is separate from your body. It's almost in control of you, but <laughs> I know through your research, it's all about controlling the mind and making it work for you. Well, yes, and hi to you as well. Nice to be talking to you. And, and, and yes, now I'm really sorry, but I've, I've, I wrote your names down. Oh. And I've completely forgotten talking about minds. Yes. Lucy and Kel, there you go. And Kel, so that's... fine. I know you speak to a million people. You can just call her, hey, no, you, and or you. No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. and, and um, but, but yes, Kel, to, to that question, it was that um, people think, when people think of their mind, they often mix it up with their brain. They think, okay, that's me is what's in my head. Um, and, um, and whereas, in fact, it turns out there isn't any place where our, where our mind and our body are kind of divided. It's all, you know, we think with our legs. If, if someone's scared and nervous, yeah. they, their legs start to twitch. Because yeah. you know, their legs, and you can see this in a child, or you can see this, certainly see it if you tie your dog up at the supermarket to go into the shop, the dog will stand there and its legs will start twitching because it really, it really wants to run in after you. Um, and, and so you can almost, even people with animals in their lives know that you can read their bodies very mm -hmm. well. Um, and so, but human beings don't read their bodies very much. 
And that's where the idea of super sense came in, that, that it turns out that sometimes that we can um, learn a lot about what our true feelings are and even how to be safe and how to navigate around other people by listening to our bodies. So let's talk about super sense because that's kind of going to set up this whole next hour. What mm. exactly is super sense? Because I know we talk about gut feelings and that, oh, I, in, my, in my gut. Is it that or does it go deeper than that? Okay. Um, these, are, these are great questions and I'm sure you'll be patient with me while I try and yes. set it all out. <laughs> there's, there's this, um, if people think about, if you've ever seen a picture of the brain, um, you know, in a, in a a book or on the internet you see a picture of the human brain or in it, it's it's actually got two halves it's you know it's got and, and and even even fish or birds have the same thing so all animals your brain has two halves and if you were to look up close the two halves are actually very separate you could almost put your hand down between the two halves there's only a tiny bit down the bottom which connects the two sides and so the first question is well why is that? Mm. You know, why don't we just have, you know, we've only got one heart, you know, why do we have two brains? And it turns out that from very, um, you know, even I said with birds or fish, there's two things your brain has to do. Now, so let's say it's a, um, a blackbird on the back lawn. It's, it's, got, it's chasing a worm. So the left side of its brain is thinking, worm, 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 you know, it's really concentrating, it really wants breakfast. But the other side of its brain, is doing something very important if that blackbird is going to live much longer, which is looking out for cats. <laughs> and so, so the right side of the brain keeps the big picture and is, is always looking out for the big picture. And the left side, which is where most of us live all the time, and where, you know, when we're talking to each other, we're using the left side of our brain. Um, that, um, if you have to have both, um, but there's such a different job that they have to do that they did the brain divided into two parts so it could one could concentrate on the big picture and one could concentrate on the focused things and so that's how our brain works and so in the book for instance i gave the example of a patient of mine who escaped from a from um a, a man who was going to looking to kill somebody and she she had a um she was in a car park and this man asked for her help and she just panicked and got in a car and drove away um and that man attacked the next woman who came to the car park. Mm. And so, and he was very well dressed and very well spoken and very polite. And there was nothing really to say that she was in any danger, but something in her gut went kind of crunch. Mm. And she just got out of there and she, she was really cross with herself. She said, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, mm. that poor man, you just drove off, you know. And, um, but when we, it turned out that probably that saved her life. Mm. And so... It's, we call it super sense because it's the it's the right side of your brain that takes in everything you see and everything you hear, even if you don't even pay attention. Yeah. And and but it can't talk to you. That side of the brain is like your wild animal part, and it can't speak in words. So what it does is it sends signals down the middle of your body, down your vagus nerve to your gut, and. And so you will get, and everyone listening to this right now, if you go down in your gut, you'll feel those little kind of squirmy feelings or kind of soft, melty feelings or, you know, whatever it is, whatever you're feeling about what I'm saying, your gut knows. Mm -hmm. and, and if you listen to it, it's often got really useful things to say like, don't trust this person mm -hmm. or, you know, or no, I can't accept that other invitation for something, yeah. you know, because I'm really, whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's always got a voice. Does that make sense yes. to you both, Kelly? I Lucy? Yeah. love that. I love that. Look, we're going to go and take a short break and then we're going to come back and unpack this super sense a little more. But maybe you've experienced what Steve's talking about or you want to ask about this super sense or these gut feelings. Join the conversation. Jump on the phones because Steve will be talking to you next. one three hundred. Triple seven eight double nine. Bit of a catchy song there with Lucy and Kel for <laughs> breakfast normally. But right now, it's Lucy and Kel Relate on 89.9, the light positive radio as we go through our third one-hour special in regards to mental health during this month 
of October, Mental Health Month. Yes, and the incredible author and psychotherapist Steve Biddle joins us now discussing this concept of super sense, those instinctual feelings below your feelings, which can really help you in so many situations. And this all relates back to mental health and listening to and trusting ourselves. Steve, thanks for hanging around with us. Now, we do have some callers, so let's get into this and keep discussing this whole new theory, which I just love. Janelle in Croydon joins us. Janelle, what's your question for Steve? Oh, I was just wondering if I can um, actually rely on my gut. I was always taught not to trust my emotions, um, so I'm just not sure I trust myself. So, yeah, just can I rely on my gut? Uh, hi, Janelle. That's, <laughs> hi. A, a, that's a, such an important question. Uh, now, let me explain that gut feelings are not the same as emotions. Um, and the way, mm. we, the way we sort of, um, ex- sort of experience it is in, in, a, in a sense they're further down. Um, in, mm. in, so, so when you think of emotions, um, you, know, you get angry or scared or, or um, happy or sad. Um, they, they have a very familiar quality to them. You think, mm. here I go again, I'm angry again, you know, or I'm sad again. Mm. And um, you, you, your f- feelings are, are kind of just everyday and quite normal. But gut feelings, it's like you go, f- it, they, it's a very physical thing. Mm. Now, feelings are physical too, but if you go down in, into your belly, mm. and it's usually, it's usually down the middle of your body, but it can be, mm. it can be in your shoulders or anywhere else, um, you'll notice that there is actual sensations. Sort of, it might be like a, a squeezing, or like a bit of a tightness, or mm. um, or an opening, and um, and so uh, can have you, have you got a second to hang on while I tell you a story to illustrate this? Absolutely, okay? <laughs> yes, I'm intrigued oh, already. Oh, <laughs> great, yes, yes. My favorite, this is my favorite example was a a, a, um, a teenage girl that that I I mentioned in one, in my Raising Girls book, and it's a girl that I know that I asked her if I could use this story, and she was going out with a boy for about six months and he he started pushing pressure on her to start having sex they and they, they'd been you know really quite happy together and 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 in a nice relationship but all of a sudden he started getting coming on a bit strong and mm. and mm. she was really mixed up about it and she asked she said and she was a girl who talked to her mum a lot so she just told her mum you know and said mum you know there's a bit of pressure to have sex coming on and and her mum said well how do you feel about it and she said she said, I don't know, you know, I, mm. I, I love him, you know, um, <laughs> he's brilliant and everything. I just don't know how I feel, mum. And then her mum said, well, sometimes your body knows what's right for you and it sends you signals. And this girl's name was Genevieve. She said, oh, mum, she said, you're right. If we're just having a bit of a passion, a bit of a kiss, you know, in a bus stop somewhere <laughs> in the rain, you know, I'll be feeling... Feeling really great, mm. I mean, in heaven. Mm. But if he comes on too strong, I just feel I feel really squashed mm. and yeah. and uncomfortable, mm. and I don't want to have sex with him, Mum. And it's sort of all of a sudden, she knew what was right mm. for her, yeah. um, mm. and it was b- below her feelings. There was a place that we don't listen to now. I'm glad to hear you both, the two of you, um, <laughs> Lucy, Lucy and Janelle, going into <laughs> that because in my in my in my audiences, um, the women in the audience just go, yeah, with we that. We get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, your body does know. Yeah. Um, mm. and of course, it's risky. And with a teenage girl, it could be the opposite answer. She might say, oh, yeah, mama, you know, I can't, <laughs> can't wait, you know. Um, but either way, you need to know that and, and, and have that conversation. And so, so it's, it's like a, this little compass that's deep down. I love and it that. Does know? Yeah, mm. your body does, doesn't it? That's so. And, and why have we? Why have we pushed that down? Why have modern humans got rid of that and gone? We're not going to listen to our body. We're going to just stay up in our brain. What? What have we done? Because surely, surely, if we go back thousands of years, they were list, They were using all their super senses to not get eaten by saber toothed tigers. That's right. That's exactly right. And I think what happens is we don't. We don't talk to our kids about this. Mm. Um, I think it just got gradually lost as we started living in a modern world. We had to push a lot of our feelings down. Mm. And, and, um, and to cope with life was tough in the 20th century. And there were wars and there yeah. were t- terrible yes. times. And, and, um, and it's, uh, the way I like to picture it is like there's a wild creature, um, like a panther or a, a, lo- a leopard down inside you. Um, that you have a little chat to and you say, well, you know, how do I, you know, what do you think? Um, 
And it's not always right. It's not that it's like it's always wise and true, but it's always got something to say. Yes. yes. Oh, I like that analogy. I love it. Uh, we've also mm. got Neil and Lilydale joining us on the phone. Lovely. Neil, what's your question for Steve about this super sense? Hey, thanks so much for having me. Uh, one question I have for you, Steve. Thanks for being here. Um, mm. How do you know? How do you know the difference between your gut and whether you're actually just panicking about something? Yes. Oh, now that's a that's a, a, a very useful question for because everyone has that, mm. and and the the because because we do panic about things, and the, the thing to do with that is if you if you go. If you go down into your body and you notice the sensation, and you just stay with them just for a you know ten or twenty seconds, usually when you first notice them, they get worse. And so if you're nervous, like say public speaking or something, mm. um, the, when you first pay attention, I have this every talk I give this little rush of panic, and and I know it's very familiar, so I stay with it. And if if the situation that you're in is is not dangerous, then you're your super sense will just start to kind of calm down and it'll you'll sort of notice oh you know i've got my shoulders up around my ears you know and i'm breathing too fast and your body will calm itself um or else there'll be something that actually is a problem and and you'll kind of know what it is um and so either way it's you'll be sort of using this kind of radar to 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 get your body's thoughts about you know what's going on does that make sense it's a bit rushed as an answer but does that make sense no absolutely yeah thanks so much i really appreciate mm. it yeah I yes that. And so, yeah so very often um if you tune into your body you'll automatically calm down because there isn't anything to worry about and um or nothing here and now that you can do anything about um and the wild creature will just say oh just chill baby you know it's like <laughs> you know stop stop hassling me with all your thoughts you know <laughs> <laughs> get down in the basement and boogie and and so so yes it can often probably with me two-thirds of the time it's just like i was just being needlessly rushing mm. um and one third of the time there'll be something that i haven't been paying attention to that i think actually you know I left the stove on when I left the house or something, and, you know, the, and it is needing some attention. This is all great stuff, Steve. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this hour with Lucy and Kel Relate on a Friday. We are talking super sense. We are talking about such a noisy world that we live in, Rush but maybe trying world. to just tune in and listen to our bodies, not just the chatter going on in our mm. minds, but the, what our body is telling us about how we're feeling and trying to achieve some better mental health. We're going to take some more calls very shortly, Liz. Yeah, jump on the phone if you've got questions about this whole idea. one 899 We'll be back with Steve just after this. Good afternoon in Melbourne. Lucy and Kel relate on 89.9 The Light Positive Radio. The month of October, October is Mental Health Month, and we are in... Show number three of five specials across each Friday of this month, exploring more in regards to mental health. Incredible author and psychotherapist Steve Bidolf is joining us. We've had him for 35 minutes already and we're already learning so much. Steve, we've been talking about this super sense, these instinctual feelings that we need to learn to listen to. Can we talk about how that works with our emotions as well? Because Steve, I am your classic emotional woman. I love being emotional. I, I watch TV ads and I cry <laughs> or I see a puppy and I cry. But also on the other flip side of that, I actually have been diagnosed with a little bit of PTSD. And sometimes when mm. I flick into that freeze mode, when you're highly anxious, you don't even fight or flight, you just freeze. How on earth do I manage emotions and listening to my gut when I get stuck in those places? Okay, now first of all, let's just figure out what what emotions are and and how they what their what their purpose is, mm. um, because they're not just kind of rubbish to want to get rid of. Um, it, and the, the best example I could ever think of for explaining this was if if you imagine driving to work in the car, and it's the same drive you do every day, and you've done it forever, and you probably your mind is probably completely off somewhere, and you're super sense is doing the driving <laughs> but the um all of a sudden someone pulls into your lane coming towards you at high speed all of a sudden there is a car heading towards you for a head-on collision mm. 
and at the very last minute, you know, you've you've hit your brakes, it hits its brakes, and it just finally serves back into the right lane, inches from your front of your car, and so nothing's happened, no one's collided, um, the, you can't do anything, you just got to keep driving, mm. um, but you're you're not the same person, mm. and um, you, you whole you're just very very stirred up. Mm. Now, if you think about it, there's it, that stirred up feeling. You know, when you get to work, if the people are asking how you are, how you are or anything, it'll just all come pouring out, mm. and there'll be there'll be a bunch of emotions. For example, there'll definitely be fear. You know, in the moments that car was skidding towards you, fear would have leapt up in your body because you needed to have that. Because you might have, you know, first of all, had to be very focused and steer your car out of danger. Um, and you might have had to, you know, fight your way out of, out of a, a car wreck. And so you really needed that adrenaline. Mm. So your body provided that. Um, you might have needed a, a fair burst of anger. Say there was just a, a bunch of kids fooling around and they're just laughing and, and carrying on. Um, and, and suddenly you're all on the side of the road with cars everywhere, you, you probably would have needed some anger to, to tell them not to do that. Um, and so that's your protective side. Another part of your brain was thinking, I'm going to die and my kids want to have a mum or a dad and, and my life's over and I wasn't really ready for that. And so, so there's a, even some sadness in the back of there. Um, even there's a tiny bit of joy, perhaps, that you're still alive. Mm -hmm. And so, so th that's the four primary feelings, and they're all swirling around inside you. And, and so when you get to work, if there's anyone who's got a kind face in five minutes of time, you know, you probably burst into tears or tell them all about it. Or, um, you know, when you get home that night to your family, say, look, you wouldn't believe what happened. And if that is all provided for, then you won't have post-traumatic stress from that. Mm -hmm. um, you will, um, because the, the two things, the feelings were there for a reason, mm -hmm. you might have needed them, and two, they've all now been expressed and they've moved on and, and they've done their job. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if we were taught and raised as children, and, and we were joking about this um, before Lucy being raised in Yorkshire, mm -hmm. where, where um, people <laughs> in my day, uh, didn't talk about emotions at all, yeah. um, then um, perhaps you might find it hard to be angry or hard to admit, if you're a man, hard to admit that you were scared. Mm. Um, and so sometimes we, we hang on to those feelings. Um, and so, um, and so or we swap one for another. So, so a, a, a man who's pretty scared about losing his job might be angry with his children. Mm. Um, because he's converting one feeling into another. And so, so there's, we can get pretty tangled up with emotions. But there, once you realize, and this is what we, a big part of the book, the Fully Human book, was helping people to know emotions are your friends. Mm. And they're there to carry you through different sorts of situation. And they're kind of a life force that helps you. You know, when you're sad, you get sad and you grieve and you, and you kind of let it come. And it carries you like this beautiful flood that just washes you through the grief and, and to a better place. And, and so that if, if, they, if we regard feelings as our friends, I kind of sort them out a little, do a bit of thinking about which one it might be. Is this all making sense, yeah. Kelly yeah. and Lucy? Oh, yeah. yes. I love, Steve, how it's all sort of, all these systems are running concurrently without us almost even knowing mm. and having emotions yeah. is a great thing like you said and dealing with stuff emotionally is a good thing mm. getting it all out and i also love what we're talking about this morning as well with super sense which is almost like an early warning system that our body <laughs> provides us and we're talking more about that with some of our calls this morning yeah we've got a caller here we've got chloe just talking about this very topic emotions and littlies chloe welcome to the show what's your question for steve good afternoon guys um so, obviously, the last two years have been really hard for everyone. Mm. Um, as a result, my three-year-old has been far more emotional. Mm. Um, so, my question is, how can I help my incredibly emotional three-year-old without letting my emotions get in the way of my responses to her behaviour? Because my fuse is a lot shorter yes. than it should be. Great question. I think everybody's fuse is a lot shorter, Chloe. <laughs> yes. Oh, hi, Chloe. It's lovely to talk to you. Thanks for being brave and, and ringing up. Mm. And and the um, one of the first things um, is that 
it's a, with that age, they're still figuring it out a lot and they have a lot of trouble with their feelings. And so the, the first step is to be really careful about our own feelings. Um, and so when you were talking, I was listening to your breathing and, um, and you, you actually breathe quite um, not very deeply. And, and so you, and after each sentence that you spoke, you took in a big like gasp of breath. Mm. And so, so that's just one of the things that, that I was trained to listen for when people are, ask, you know, are, are talking. And so um, the ideas in the book of, going, of you going down into your body, um, now it's, of course it's very scary to ring up a radio station. And so you know, I'm nervous just being on this program. <laughs> and, and, so, um, um, and so if you go down into your body, you kind of notice, oh, you know, I'm not breathing very much. Mm. And then you sort of let a, a big slow breath come in and another slow breath out. And because what happens when you're around a, a child who's very having lots of feelings, we our body automatically starts to kind of go to what they're feeling, because we because our bodies are very sympathetic to each other, and you love your child, and so if they're upset, you can easily feel upset. And so, but what happens is that often we kind of meet in the middle. They get we get a, a bit more stressed, and they get a bit more relaxed talking to us. Um, but if the very best thing is if the minute your child is stressed that you go into your body and you just don't say much, you just kind of start to soothe yourself and calm yourself down. Um, and then you can maybe just ask them a question like, can you tell me some more about what you're feeling or what was it that upset you? Or, um, you know, I'm not sure if you're angry or you're sad. Can you tell me that? And now, the three, they're just struggling to be able to do these things, but, but you're kind of steering them towards kind of more self-awareness and, and not being caught in their emotion. Um, now, is this sounding, you know, I don't know your little one, and so mm -hmm. is this sounding like something that might work for them? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, I do find that when she's really heightened in her emotions that I get very anxious very quickly yeah. and then that makes me mm. react negatively towards her because I am losing control of the situation quickly mm. and so um, I start to then panic and then I'm like remember to breathe and then I forget to breathe and <laughs> okay. end up crying so yeah sure well that's it's it's um, often we, we from our own childhoods we bring we bring upsets and maybe people weren't very good at soothing us when we were little and we have you know if we had an hour and we didn't have a radio audience <laughs> you and I could have a good talk about that but but we just want to give you a few clues mm -hmm. and, and 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 you're right on the you know you've got a good brain and you're right on the ball and you're you're aware that you're saying to yourself I'm losing control you know um, what will happen if, if I lose control and whereas in fact I, I spend a lot of time with toddlers because I've got uh, granddaughters and I lose control about every 10 minutes. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, um, and it's a bit like having a herd of cattle. They just, they do stampede, but they sort of, they stop after a while. You can go and round them up again. Um, and so you check, just check everything's safe and there's no sharp knives around or anything. And, and um, just, and just kind of, it'll, it'll come back under control again in a few minutes and it'll be all right. Oh, I just love that. Thank you, Chloe. I think you are speaking on behalf of most mums and dads during lockdown. So thanks for being so brave. We have to take a short break. We'll be back one last time with Steve talking about an incredible idea in the book, the four-story mansion of the mind. I think everyone's going to take something away super practical from this last little segment. So stay with us. We'll be back after this. Friday afternoon in Melbourne, Lucy and Kel, normally for breakfast, but right now we are Lucy and Kel Relate, the third of five one-hour specials in regards to mental health during the month of October. Mm, and we've spent the last hour, oh, it's gone by too quickly, if you ask me, with Steve Biddulph, one of the most beautifully spoken psychotherapist authors. I don't ever want this to end, um, but it has to. But we haven't touched on something we did mention earlier, and it's such a big theme of the book, and I'm in love with this idea. It has really, it's worked for me in the way my brain thinks, this whole idea of the four-story mansion of the mind. Steve, talk us through this, because I think it's so helpful. Sure. Y yes, it's, 
as I said, my brain is very simple and I like to have a simple picture to help me to navigate around in, in my life. And the, the fourth story mansion is a way of understanding the way that your brain and your nervous system is organized. It's the architecture of your mind. That We've already been talking about your body and how your body is, is um, important to look after. And, and that's the ground floor. And, and, of course, and it's really practical as well as the super sense. You have to just make sure you've had enough to eat mm. and, and a good sleep. Sometimes that's all it is. You just haven't, you know, or you've had too many coffees or mm. something. Um, but then the second floor if you, is, is, is our feelings. And you come up a floor and that's where all the emotions are. And that's a kind of like a disco dance floor. It's always very colorful and lively. Um, and, um, and then the next coming up another floor it's almost like you're going in an elevator through your own mind up above that is your intellect which is calm and cool and does the clear thinking and reasons things out um and that's generally pretty important that's how we come to have hospitals and spaceships and cars and radio stations it's all logic and, and being practical and and then the fourth floor is spirituality, and and we which we we'll, can talk about if, if there's time. But but you want to get picture people the whole picture. What that means is that most people only live on one floor or two of their mansion, and they so they in effect they're saying, look, you know, I've, I've, the accommodation is really crap. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, it's not very nice in here because they they they've ignored all, all the other floors. Um, and so they might be living in the in the basement when not know there's a really beautiful you know roof garden up up above, and so the idea of how mental health works is when you you can move freely through all the levels of your mind and kind of turn on all the lights, um, and then it starts those levels start to stack up. Now, the very practical thing is that most people are stuck on one fl one of two floors. Mm -hmm. First of all, some people are stuck in emotions. Mm -hmm. And if you think of people that you know, they, um, they're just always feeling, you know, they're mm -hmm. always scared or they're always angry. And, and, and they get boring to be around. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a bit sad for, for them. And they re really need to, to move up a floor. Mm -hmm. And come up and say, you know, okay, what's this? What's the problem here? What are my options? Um, how do they stack up? What could I do? It's, it's about, you know, solving it instead of just emoting all over the place. Mm. Um, and, but then the, also some people get stuck on the third floor, mm. and they think and think and think and think, um, and they're more likely to be male, but not always, and um, and they are really boring. Because because there's not no you don't feel any juice to them if that makes sense mm -hmm. they they're just kind of flat and logical a bit kind of robotic, um, and they need to get back in touch with their hearts, and and to 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 feel you know instead of just talking all the time to notice that I was like this with with grief I was um, my first reaction because I'm a little bit along the autism spectrum and my first reaction if someone says how are you I'm fine I'm always fine. Mm -hmm. And um, but it takes a fair bit to get me to cry. But when 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 I do, and there's some stories about this in in the book about some grief that I went through with, with in our family. And when I finally let go, I just cried for you know like the the carpet was wet, you mm -hmm. know. But and and so um, so it, I needed to get down a floor to where my heart was, um, and and so moving between the, and sometimes life is so tough that only spirituality will will help us yeah. to deal with it and we have to go up to where we feel um loved and and belonging overall whatever that we're never alone and we're never abandoned mm. because we feel like we are and so only spirituality will address those really big questions and um and as we've already sa said you know sometimes going down into your body is another way to 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 resolve um strong physical um distress so so th yeah so that's the mansion I, I, is it making sense oh, yes steve that's such a complex 
set of thoughts all described so simply yes. and perfectly yes. and has opened up so many things for me just <laughs> in that so last good. three minutes. That's I just... Know, I know, oh. I love it. That is such a simple way of looking at how we operate in and, such a complicated way. And, and so <laughs> helpful. That visualisation is so unbelievably helpful. Steve, we have quickly run out of time. I am so disappointed. I feel like I could talk to you forever. Your, your voice is so soothing. I feel like <laughs> I can breathe easier having mm. just spoken to you for this last <laughs> hour which is such a blessing what a blessing you are to people you carry an in incredible presence with you steve what would you leave us with on this friday afternoon what's something we can take away that we can work on that can perhaps help us all on our journey of life really oh yes well i think really it always comes back to to knowing to knowing that you, that you you're loved that um, there's a feeling that we all should have got when we were little that mm. that we were pr precious and and um, cherished and, and and always that feeling of being held in someone's arms and just absolutely loved and taken care of and we didn't always get that in our childhoods in fact very few of us got that as much as we needed but but it's still true mm. um, we, we're lovable and special and and if we can go to that place then then we can loosen up and and enjoy what life has to give us oh i love that i think you've probably got a lot of people in tears around melbourne this afternoon steve <laughs> bedolf what an absolute honor and a treat to speak to you thank you so much for your time today well, thank you both it was a brilliant time thank you we are going to just go a little bit longer than normal we love the discussions that we have here we'll be back lucy and myself to wrap up after this with lucy and kel relate on 89.9 the light <laughs> And just like that, another hour done. <sighs> Episode three of five one-off, one-hour specials about dealing with all manner of mental health. We've gone, we've come so far, Lucy. We started with the mental health of our kids. Yep. We delved into dealing with self-care mm. on a real level yep. and not feeling guilty about mm -hmm. that to help with our mental health. And today with Steve has been really eye-opening. Oh so many great things we can take away if you want to watch this back you can it'll be at thelight.com.au it'll also be on our facebook i think some of the things that i really enjoyed from Stephen gee whiz wasn't it good i just i love him i am the biggest fan of steve i loved a few of the things talking about breathing in that sense where is it for you where, where can you feel like settled mm. and that letting yourself just relax give yourself permission to just stop I also loved his description of the wild, calm animal inside. He talks a lot about that in his book. There is a wild, calm animal. And I love that he said, uh, I don't know if you remember, in one of the first breaks, he said, like, there's a panther inside you, but sometimes it's saying, just chill, baby. And I thought, it's so great. It's this wild animal that's also calm and we can connect to that feeling. And then, of course, finally, that four-story mansion. It starts with our body on the first floor. The second floor is that emotional space for all of us. That third floor is our intellect. And then that fourth floor is spirituality. And you can have such a healthier mental health if you can learn to move between the four using that super sense as well. Letting your body feel, letting your emotions happen because that's okay. Using your intellect and also connecting to something bigger than yourself. And know at the end of the day, you are loved. That's what we've learned today. I That was just... I have goosebumps on my goosebumps because that was just such a beautiful episode and I feel like I've been so blessed by Steve that I could cry right now. So I hope you're feeling it too. Thank you so much to the Light family that have stepped in with their questions. Always insightful, always very vulnerable, our Light family. And we're sorry we couldn't get to this. So many texts mm. and people on the Facebook and calls. We, we obviously, it goes so quickly and we would have loved to have Steve here for three hours, but he's a very busy man. So we're, we're thankful for everybody who tried to connect. God bless you. We'll be back, of course, next week and you can always give us your questions then. Yeah, for this show in particular, we'll break down all the key points and you'll be hearing those replayed across the shows here at The Light, specifically on a Sunday at 10am. Yep. Yep. The entire hour will be replayed. And don't forget, you can access it all online eventually sometime this afternoon at thelight.com.au. Oh my goodness, Light family. We love you. We're doing this, hey? We're all getting through life together. We're the 
trying to be the best versions of ourselves. And that is so commendable. We love you dearly. We do. Don't forget to love each other and yourselves, more yeah. importantly. You as are we, loved. You are so loved. We move on into the afternoon. A bit of joy back on the radio after the news. And we hope you have a great weekend with family and friends. And if you haven't got that many family or friends around, you've always got family and friends here at 89.9 The Light with more Lucy and Kel Relate next Friday here on The Light. 89.9 The Light. When... The Light, Positive Radio.